Hello, can you hear me? I hear you just fine. How are you? I'm good, sir. How are you doing? I am just peachy today. Great, great. Um, uh, do I have permission to record this interview? Yes, you do. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so Mega Millions and Powerball, these are huge jackpots. Um, even as I was grocery shopping yesterday, I could hear people in the aisles chitter chattering about it. Um, huge jackpots, but crazy ridiculous odds of winning. What can you tell us about, about those odds? They're long. Um, so since this is a basketball town, I'll give you a basketball analogy first. Uh, let's suppose there's one magic basketball that has an X drawn on it. And let's put you in the Rose Garden. Uh, and let's imagine you, you sit there, you're watching basketballs appear in the, at, the, at the roof and start filling the place. And filling the place. And when the entire Rose Garden is totally filled with basketballs, that's about 35 million basketballs. Okay? Okay. Now, um, the Powerball is about 275 million to one. The Mega Millions is about 305 million to one. Let's split the difference and keep the numbers easy and talk about a 300 million to one bet. Okay? So to get 300 million basketballs, you'd need nine Rose Gardens. Okay? So here's what we do. We blindfold you so you can't see it. You know, you can't see if the ball has the X or not. And you get to pick one of those nine rose gardens and we toss you in there and you get to swim around in the entire volume of the rose garden. And you get to come out with one basketball. Does yours have the X on the bottom? Probably not. Then you're not the Powerball winner. <laughs> that is an incredible analogy. That's nice. yeah, another way, I'll give you one other way just because um, we live to serve in mathematics. Um, imagine a swimming pool 40 feet wide, 120 feet long, and five feet deep. And let's suppose that swimming pool is filled to the brim with M&Ms. That's about 300 million M&Ms. In that swimming pool, there is precisely one green M&M. And so we put some tape over your mouth and blindfold you, throw you in the pool, you get to swim around to your heart's content, and come up with one M&M &M in your hand. Got the green one there? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so that's that's your frequency of winning the Powerball or the Mega Millions. Roughly. Sure, sure. You know, little, it's a little bit better for the Powerball. Maybe that swimming pool is only 118 feet long. <laughs> you know, a little bit worse for the Mega Millions. Maybe it's 121 feet long. But, you know, it, it's about, you know, I, I think the answer is, it's probably not going to be you. Absolutely. Um, is, there, is there anything that people can do to increase their odds of winning? Yeah, well, okay. So the frequency of winning, there's nothing you can do about. That's mathematical game theory and the lottery commission has that wired. Every ticket has the same chance. Doesn't matter what numbers you play every ticket has the same chance of winning. Now, you do have opponents in this game though, and those are all the other people who are playing the lottery. And if they were all perfect computers and played every number the same frequency, in other words, they played randomly. So if everybody else just got their ticket from the computer and had the computer pick it, then there'd be nothing you could do. But human beings aren't rational. They believe in luck. Certain people think the numbers three or seven are lucky. You go to Asia, they think eight's a lucky number. They had huge amounts of induced pregnancies on 8-8-1988 because that was a lucky day to be born, okay? So people do things like play their birthdays. You need six numbers, you know, we play, we play the family birthdays. Well, what this means is that there are lots of tickets that have the numbers one to 31 on them, but not many tickets that have the numbers from 32 to 55. So what you can do to cut down the odds of you having to chop that big prize is to never play numbers less than 31. 
with the exception of 13 that nobody plays because they don't, the people won't go to a 13th floor in a building, you know? So, I mean, so yeah, you know, so, and you can fine tune that a little bit, but so while we can't affect how often you win, you can, by your choice of numbers, affect how much you're likely to win. And for that, you just need knowledge of your opponents. And that's something that we call behavioral game theory. It depends on how your opponents behave, not the mathematical structure of the game. That is incredible. <laughs> I, yeah, I, well, I, you know, it works better the few people who know it. So try not to spread around this little idea. But here I am on TV telling everybody about it. But you know, don't talk it up. It'll work. It works better. The, you see what I mean? The more people employ it, the less well it works. Yeah, but, uh, that's the way but all behavioral things are. Yeah, but we're we're irrational creatures. We want those those luck those lucky numbers because I I definitely um I I did a I did two you know the the computer as quick picks and then I did one with the lucky numbers knowing that it's just something silly and it's two dollars and I'm not gonna win and you know it's just and something. Thank you very much for those of us who don't play those birthday numbers. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, throwing some extra money in the prize pool and upping my chances of winning a loan. So, exactly. Thank you very much for your service. Yeah. Um, do, do you buy lottery tickets when it gets, when the jackpots get this high? I buy lottery tickets when my expectation is positive and expectation is the size of the prize times the odds of winning it. Uh, for example, if we were going to flip a fair coin, and being generous, I was going to give you a dollar if it came up heads. You could probably tell me that your average value, your expectation for each flip was 50%. Yeah, 50 cents. Right. Half the time you'll get a dollar and half the time you won't get anything. So you'll never get 50 cents on any one flip. That's not the point. And if you flipped it 10 times, you'd expect, that's why it's called expectation, to get around $5. Would it surprise you if you were unlucky and only got three? Probably not. Would you be happy if you were lucky and got seven? Probably. But if we flipped it a thousand times, you'd be expect to get closer to $500. And if you only got 300, you'd start to suspect that that coin wasn't quite fair, <laughs> right? And if you got 700, and again, if we did it a million times, right, you'd get even closer to, relatively closer to half a million dollars. The $10 word for that is what's called a stochastic limit. Uh, and the point is, is the law of large numbers says that if you have enough trials, if you do it enough, your performance becomes closer to your expectation. And so that's what we can affect with the lottery. We can affect our expectation by choosing our numbers carefully. So we can't change the odds side of the equation. That's baked in stone. But we can change the likelihood of the size of the prize we get. Because we have opponents who aren't playing in the most rational way. And that's something that we can exploit. It's something that, that kind of came to my mind, you know, we, again, like you said, humans are irrational. Um, and I really only, you know, throw down a few dollars when the jackpots are this are this big. Would it make more sense to play the the you know three to four million, you know, the smaller jackpots because people don't play those as, as often because it seems like there's so many people right now playing, trying to get that big, right. you know, big win. Does it make it if you know? Obviously, this is never for investment purposes, but All right. no, no, no. <laughs> Well, okay, any lottery purchase, you have to remember what it is that you're buying. You're buying a dream. You're buying the ability to sit in your chair and look out into space and smile and imagine that every crook in the world isn't gonna track you down and kidnap your children and you know, rob your house as soon as they find out you've won an obscene amount of money in the lottery. Right. And you can easily imagine that all my troubles will be over. I'll just, you know, I'll quit my job. I'll buy that beach house in Barbados and I'll, I'll live on Corona and nachos. 
for the rest of my life. I mean, you're buying a dream. Now, I always say, who is to say that your dreams are not worth the price of having them? And the answer to that, in my humble opinion, is, is that when the price of those dreams gets to be so much that your reality is harmed, when that starts happening, when you start spending the grocery money on lottery tickets, when you start not paying the rent because you need the money to go play video poker, okay, you, you know, you're kind of over the edge now. You know what I mean? Chasing that dream is now harming you. But if, you know, chasing that dream isn't harming you, then why not, you know, have a little flutter. Maybe you'll win one of the smaller prizes. You know, every once in a while, uh, they have to toss you a couple of bucks or nobody would play ever, right? I mean, the people who run the casinos have this down to a science, right? I mean, they put, you know, they've done this. Put Mr. Rat in a box with a pellet, uh, with a pellet dispenser and a lever. And if he hits the lever and no pellets ever come out, pretty soon he quits. And if Mr. Rat hits the lever and pellets always come out, well, whenever he feels like a pellet, he'll walk over and whack it. But if the pellets come out only once in a while and in no discernible pattern, he will spend all day at that lever whacking that pellet thing. And so that's just mammals. That's what we are as, you know, um, not lizards, you know, lizard, you know, your lizard brain, that's how bait works. This smells like food, I'll eat it. Not thinking what would this, you know, what would this carrot be doing here floating in the swimming pool, right? You know, it's like, so yeah, we're mammals. And so we behave like mammals. And if we think, you know, that, okay, here we are, you know, uh, in the monkey house doing what monkeys do, well, if we think about it a little bit, we can up our expectation a little bit, you know. So yeah, I don't have any, any moral problems with people dreaming. I, I think it's a wonderful thing. Hope is a great thing. Some people think that hope was the heaviest evil, which is why it didn't escape Pandora's box. <laughs> you know, all the other ones got out, but it couldn't because it was the heaviest evil. Or you can look at it, it was the thing in there to balance out all the old, other evils that were in there. Mm. In any event, you know, hoping and dreaming, this is good for you. And in these trying times, why would I argue amongst anybody about taking a flutter for the dream of unimaginable wealth and the knowledge that every relative you ever had and never heard about is about to appear back in your life? <laughs> Absolutely. My, um, my, my husband won $7 and, and yeah, it's just that, Ooh, fun for us. Fun. Yes. $7. Let's go spend this on, on a Starbucks we're... coffee. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Well, let's buy it on $7 more lottery tickets. Yeah, Actually, right. yeah, that, that is what we did. We re yeah. reinvested it. <laughs> reinvested it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> how's that working for you? Well, we'll find out tomorrow and Wednesday, <laughs> but probably go. not very good. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Well, like I say, uh, dreams are part of the human condition, and I don't, I don't have any problem with people chasing dreams as long as that they are not hurting anyone or anyone else. Yeah, that was said very well. Thank you. Um, that really is it for the questions I had. Is there anything else you want to add about uh, these ridiculously large jackpots and lotteries as we as we look ahead to tomorrow and Wednesday? Um, no, I mean, just remember that they're large because of all of the people who played and didn't win before you. That's <laughs> what makes them large. And in many ways, the lottery is a tax on a numeracy. If you can't calculate your expectation, then you're just, you know, like dreaming, you know, you're just walking in here, take my money. Um, that's what you're doing. And as long as you appear, uh, realize that you're paying a tax. I mean, you know, the lottery supports the state of Oregon, make no mistake. I mean, it, it really does. And so what you're doing is you're paying a voluntary tax and what you get back is a dream and some entertainment. So as long as that bargain is worth it to you, then I would say go right ahead and have fun. That's awesome. I, I appreciate that. Yeah, I, you know, my husband and I spent the weekend, you know, we 
go grocery shopping and in the car, oh, and when we win, we're going to do this for that person. And then, you know, a couple hours later making dinner and then we'll get that for that, you know, we're right. going to buy this. For th yeah, it's just. Aren't dreams wonderful? Dreams they are, are great. I love them. They're it's great. great. It is great. They're great. Well, thank you so much for taking uh, some time out of your, your afternoon to talk with me. I really appreciate it. We will, um, I'm going to turn this around and uh, it'll be in our 10 and 11 o'clock tonight and then probably throughout uh, tomorrow's newscast too. Okay, great. Well, um, could I get a GIF or some copy of whatever little piece that you use? Um, sure, yeah. Um, add I, to my considerable resume? Uh, <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, I will make sure that this also gets posted on our website. And I have your email and I will email you that link if that works. That would be perfect. That would, right. work. That would work just fine. As long as perfect. people say, oh, they interviewed you for Channel 6, eh? Well, where can I see that? You yes. Know? <laughs> so, you know, so, you know, yeah, you know, I answer to Dean Litz and, uh, you know, Provost Lings, and they tend to read your stuff and they don't, you know, they're very skeptical. Sure. Uh, sure. It's their job to be skeptical. And so it's nice to be able to wave, here's the link uh, under their nose. Absolutely. So Absolutely. So yeah. I'll, I'll email that to you. Um, I, I probably won't get to it until tomorrow. Um, and if you don't hear okay. from me, just be like, hey, can I get that link and and I'll I'll send it. I yeah, I call myself I, I, I call myself a goldfish. I, <laughs> I the minute I walk out the room, I'm gonna think of four other things I have to do and forget what I was just doing. And, 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 and that's okay. I mean, it's going to be quite a few uh, months before anybody is going to sit and do a post tenure review on me. So you have plenty of time uh, okay. to have that. You know what I mean? Yeah. The way that it, it, it works, at some point, some committee is going to want to see my little portfolio sure. and then decide, that, you know, do you get that hundredth of a percent raise, with, you know, Dr. <laughs> Tyler? Uh, yeah. That's how higher education works, and we love it because yep. we live to serve. So Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. okay. Well, you, you enjoy the rest of your evening, and um, I appreciate you talking to me. My pleasure. Thank Bye -bye. you. Okay, bye.